This lecture covers the general approach to a febrile child. This is an introductory lecture. The subsequent lectures will be more specific and will outline approaches um, to fever as they relate to specific age groups. What is fever? Fever is defined as a temperature of 38 degrees Celsius or 100.4 degree Fahrenheit. Now, um, the numbers are, are important, especially when we uh, talk about approaching fever in a very specific age group, and they become crucial for children who have uh, under the age of uh, three months who have a fever. Rectal temperatures are generally slightly higher. They're also a much more accurate reflection of the core body temperature. Uh, temperatures in early morning tend to be slightly lower, maybe one degree Fahrenheit, 0.5 degrees Celsius. This is really important uh, when you have that four-week-old baby and you are going to decide to do a workup based on the body temperature. So if they are 99.6 versus 100.4, then take into consideration what time of the day it is and whether that should impact your decision to do a workup. Also remember that 25% of all ED visits in the pediatric population uh, involve the chief complaint of fever. And once again, just want to emphasize that rectal temperature is really the standard for uh, detecting fever, and uh, especially in those patients where uh, the exact number is going to be very relevant in terms of whether or not you do a workup. How would you define fever? Not just in terms of its numerical value of body temperature, but what exactly happens in a fever? Uh, fever is really a controlled elevation in the body's uh, temperature. And uh, fever is really, the, the key point here is controlled, um, as opposed to, um, let's say, hyperthermia, which is, uh, we will talk about in a moment, is, is, is an uncontrolled elevation in body's temperature. So fever is a controlled elevation in the body's temperature. Um, basically what happens is that the, the thermostat in the body, which is basically the hypothalamic thermoregulatory set point, um, is, is elevated um, when a body encounters uh, an infection, whether it's viral or bacterial, there's, a, there's an immune response, and that response releases uh, things like interleukin-1, and if pyrogen basically um, resets the thermostat in your body to a higher set point and causes fever, and that fever is an important uh, part of the immune response. Fever retards bacterial growth. Um, it also improves the neutrophils' actions, makes them more effective. It is also helpful in uh, mediating the acute phase reactions in the immune response. So it is very much a part of your immune response and, and helps the body in fighting an infection. And I think that's really important thing to emphasize when you talk to parents uh, about fever and address some of their anxieties about fever. And we will talk more about that a little bit later. Also, I had just mentioned the difference between hyperthermia and fever. Let me just go into that a little bit just to clarify uh, that hyperthermia is really an uncontrolled rise in body temperature. It is really the failure of thermoregulatory system. This thermoregulatory failure could have two major mechanisms. You're exposed to excessive heat and your body's not able to uh, lose enough heat in an adequate fashion, uh, which can happen if you are uh, sitting in a sauna for a very long time or you're, it's a very, very hot day and you may be on some medications that, that interfere with your ability to perspire or you're incapacitated and you can't move from a, a hot environment and that could lead to a very high body temperature um, because you're not able to get rid of the, the uh, heat quickly enough or it could be a failure of the regulatory mechanism, uh, which could be that you have a hypothalamic dysfunction, the hypothalamus uh, suffers an infarction, there's some other sort of uh, 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 problems with it, and it can no longer maintain uh, in the body temperature. So um, hyperthermia is, is the um, failure of the thermoregulatory system in controlling the body temperature. In approaching pediatric patients with fever, it is important to emphasize to the parents that the fever is part of the immune response and unless you're able to alleviate uh, some of the uh, parents concerns about the fever your treatment will really remain um, incomplete inadequate uh, because they will still have this fear phobia and they will still um, consult another doctor in 24 hours about the fever or will return to the emergency room uh, you know the next shift because the child still has a fever 
Um, so try to take the fear factor out of the fever. Um, of course, we don't mean to imply that you can't have an un serious underlying uh, conditions that give rise to fever, and of course you need to address those. But, but very often we see fairly healthy children in the emergency department who just ha are fighting a routine viral infection and they have a fever and as soon as their temperature comes down, they're running around, they're happy, they're playful. Um, so you need to talk to the parents and, and tell them that the fever is really important in fighting um, the infection and it's, it's uh, part of the disease process and it itself is not a dangerous thing. There's 44% uh, of the uh, parents who were surveyed thought that one or two was a high fever. 7% uh, thought that the temperature could rise to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. 21% of parents thought just uh, the fever can cause brain damage. And 14% thought that fever could cause death. Of course, we know that this is not to be true. We know that, that fever in itself is not a, a damaging thing. Um, but just looking at this, um, you, it gives you an idea that the reason parents rush to the emergency departments in the middle of the night for a fever of 102 or 103 is because there are some of these myths about fever, about how damaging it can be. And so you have to um, address some of these underlying anxieties. So you can say 2001 was um, a long time ago, and uh, let's look at a more recent study, uh, February 2010, so it's a fairly recent study. And basically, um, it was a survey of English and Spanish-speaking parents, and 57% are very worried about fever. The survey also noted that there's more worry uh, about fever among pa parents of younger children, um, and parents who have less education also tended to... Um, worry more about fever. It was also noted that the Hispanic population was single most predictive factor for uh, worry about fever or f uh, 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 phobia of fever. So, the, you know, this gives you some idea in terms of challenges you would face in trying to um, address parental concerns about fever. So once again, when you speak to the parents, um, you need to point out that fever in itself is not a dangerous thing that the symptoms associated with fever, uh, such as body aches, loss of appetite, lethargy, and occasionally vomiting, uh, usually disappear with treatment f uh, of fever uh, when you bring the body temperature down to a more normal level. The other question or concern parents always have is, uh, well, the fever is not going away. It was there yesterday, and it is here again today. And you need to point out to the parents that uh, if the child is fighting a, a viral infection, the infection uh, may take several days to clear up, and the body's thermostat is going to continue to be set higher. That's why as soon as the medication wears off every four hours for Tylenol or ibuprofen, the body temperature rises again because the infectious process is still continuing. Even though you have treated that rise in temperature, the body is still fighting the infection, and as soon as the medication is going to wear off, the body is going to go back to the temperature that it feels it needs to, to fight this infection effectively. So just because there's fever for more than one or two days um, it should not in itself be uh, a cause for concern as long as the child appears well clinically. Also oftentimes uh, when we talk about um, fever in the emergency department um, there's often a nursing concern that you know the pa patient still has a fever can I discharge the patient and uh, you, once again it's the same explanation as, gave, uh, as I gave uh, just a second ago that um, the underlying process is not being addressed because it is, it is something that the body's fighting. And just keeping the person in the emergency department for a rise in temperature is not going to help because even if the person goes home and their medication wears off, the temperature will rise again. So if you insist on keeping the, the, the uh, patient in the emergency department because their temperature is still high, I think in some subtle ways it also uh, alarms the, the parents. And they're like, well, they're, they didn't want to let him go home with a fever, so next time he has a fever, I'm going to need to bring him back, him or her back. So um, it's sort of, um, it, it feeds into their anxiety. So, and, and, and you shouldn't be anxious about sending a patient home just because they uh, have a fever. The most critical part of fever management is really the appropriate clinical decision and parent education. A few other um, considerations. Just remember that the tympanic temperature um, works better for older population. There's a concern that maybe there's just the bundling in the winter months that the child comes in all bundled. Maybe that's increasing their um, body temperature. 
Um, and, and it's been shown that bundling may increase their skin temperature. They may, they may feel warm to touch. But that in itself will not make them uh, febrile. It will not increase their rectal temperature. Also, the most common cause for persistent fever is really the underdosing of uh, the antipyretic uh, Tylenol or Motrin that's being used. It is worth pointing out that there's no difference in ibuprofen or acetaminophen in controlling the body temperature. They both are uh, equally effective. Um, it is generally recommended that there should be a single therapy um, with adequate dosing. Uh, there's some concern that if you tell the, the parents to give Motrin and then give them um, Tylenol, if the temperature doesn't come down in a couple of hours, that that may cause a certain amount of confusion. They may reach for the, the wrong bottle if they have multiple medications and the child may get overdosed on something. Um, I'm not really sure if that's a, a valid concern, but nevertheless, it's, it's a concern that's out there. So the general recommendation now is that just tell them to adequately dose a single uh, antipyretic of their choice and stick with it. It is also worth pointing out that uh, in the new acetaminophen formulation, the 80 milligrams per 0.8 cc is no longer available. It's been eliminated, um, and all acetaminophen is now 160 per 5 ml. So um, just in terms of uh, treating the fever for um, very young children. Once again, um, uh, as I want to just emphasize that demystify the fever for the parents. Uh, parents have a need to maintain a normal temperature. You want to take the time to talk to them about fever and how to approach it and go over uh, dosing of the antipyretics with them so they know what, a, uh, what an adequate dose uh, of Tylenol or Motrin is for their child based on the weight.